वेलकम बैक क्लास नाइन टू ऑनलाइन केमिस्ट्री क्लासेस वी आर ऑलरेडी डूइंग चैप्टर थ्री वाटर इन विच वी हैड स्टडीड अबाउट द सॉल्युबिलिटी ऑफ अ सब्सटेंस एंड वी नो दैट सॉल्युबिलिटी ऑफ अ सब्सटेंस डिपेंड्स ऑन मेनी फैक्टर्स व्हिच डिटरमाइन द सॉल्युबिलिटी ऑफ अ सब्सटेंस फॉर एग्जांपल फर्स्ट वन वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी द फैक्टर्स व्हिच अफेक्ट सॉल्युबिलिटी ऑफ अ सॉलिड इन अ लिक्विड एंड द फर्स्ट फैक्टर बीइंग द साइज ऑफ द पार्टिकल्स तो साइज ऑफ पार्टिकल्स विच पार्टिकल्स इट इज द सॉलिड पार्टिकल्स इफ द सॉलिड पार्टिकल्स आर स्मॉल इन साइज देन दे विल इजली गेट डिजॉल्व इन अ सॉल्वेंट फॉर एग्जाम्पल यू टेक इफ यू टेक द शुगर क्रिस्टल्स विच आर बिगर इन साइज इट विल टेक टाइम टू डिजॉल्व दो शुगर क्रिस्टल्स इन वाटर टू फॉर्म शुगर सोल्यूशन बट इफ यू चेंज द शुगर सॉलिड इन टू वेरी स्मॉलर पार्टिकल्स बाई क्रसिंग दम इन द फॉर्म ऑफ अ पाउडर देन इट विल गेट डिजॉल्व इजली और फास्टली सो साइज ऑफ द पार्टिकल्स डिटरमाइन सॉलिड पार्टिकल्स यू कैन राइट साइज ऑफ सॉलिड पार्टिकल्स डिटरमाइन द सॉलिबिलिटी ऑफ अ सब्सटेंस ए स्मॉलर द साइज ए स्मॉलर द साइज ऑफ पार्टिकल्स दैट इज सॉलिड पार्टिकल्स faster is the solubility so a small size of particles of solid a smaller the size of solid particles faster is the solubility okay faster is the solubility because it will get dissolved faster example already i said now number b the second this is the first factor the second factor is contact like in order to make a solution faster or to increase the solubility there should be close contact between the solid and the solvent like increased contact between the solid and solvent will increase the process of solubility so if the contact is increased solubility is also increased both the arrows indicate means it is directly proportional okay means if we keep the solid particles away from the solvent it will take lot of time for them to get dissolved like stirring of solid you know that already you have kept some sugar in a glass of beaker now these water particles are not in contact with this sugar particles okay because it is settled down at the bottom so one spoon of sugar sugar into inside a glass full of water now those sugar have settled down at the bottom of the glass or the bottom of the beaker they are not in contact with all the solvent particles that is water but once you take a spoon and stir it stirring of the solvent will increase the contact of solid with the solvent and that will increase the rate of solubility then third point we have to read that is temperature what happens when temperature is increased or decreased or how does temperature affect the solubility of a substance like you take a saturated solution in which solid is already completely filled in that solution now if you want to add some more solid to that saturated solution you need to increase the temperature of the solution like once you start heating that saturated solution you can add more and more solid to it so generally solubility of a substance increases solubility increases with rise in temperature means as the temperature increases solubility also increases so directly we can write solubility is directly proportional to temperature it means if temperature is increased solubility will also increase but uh, with the rise in temperature it depends on the dissolution process is exothermic or endothermic two types of dissolution means the process of dissolving the solid in the solvent now it depends whether the process is exothermic or endothermic what are these exothermic are those chemical process during which heat is released outside okay heat is released and endothermic reactions are those chemical reactions 
during which the heat is absorbed. So first one, when a solid dissolves with the evolution of heat, like there are certain solid, I'll give you the example. Earlier, the lime used to come, lime means tuna, when we used to dissolve in water, lot of heat was evolved and the normal water started to boil. They used to boil because of the heat which was released. Heat was released when the lime was added or soaked in water. So that type of chemical reaction in which heat is generated, the solubility will decrease because more the heat released, once the reaction is exothermic, heat is released, the process of solubility will decrease. Okay, examples are calcium sulfate, calcium hydroxide, sodium sulfate, they are such solid that if you dissolve in a solvent, they will release heat and as the heat is released, they are exothermic reactions. Due to release of heat, their solubility in that solvent will decrease. Got it? Now, second one is endothermic reactions. Endothermic are those chemical reactions in which heat is absorbed during the reaction. It means if you dissolve them, they will absorb the heat. Examples of such chemical reactions. Now, what will happen to the solubility in which the heat is absorbed? The solubility will rise or it will increase. So, solubility increases with the rise in temperature. When a solid dissolves with absorption of heat, that is, if a solid is endothermic in nature, it absorbs heat during its solubility, uh, getting dissolved in that solvent. It will rise in temperature, that is, the solubility increases with the rise in temperature. An example of such solids is mentioned there, potassium nitrate, sodium nitrate, ammonium chloride, and sodium and potassium chloride. So temperature has an effect on the solubility. That's why solubility of a solid in a solvent is always defined or expressed as a at a particular temperature, like we write at 20 degrees C, the solubility of a substance. Why? We have to mention the temperature because with the increase or decrease in temperature, there is changes in the solubility of a substance. Okay? The next we have to do is pressure. Number D. Pressure has no effect on the solubility of a substance. Means either you increase or decrease the pressure, it will have no effect on the solubility of a substance. And the last one, number E, is the amount of solvent. Like if you are taking one bucket full of water, the solvent, then it will help to dissolve more and more sugar in it. But if you take only a glass of water, a hundred ml of water, it can accommodate very less amount of solid. So more is the amount of solvent or increased amount of solvent increases the rate of solubility. Okay. Okay, next topic which we have to study is solubility curves. As the name indicates, it is the name of a line graph, like a graph paper is there. There are two coordinates, y-axis and x-axis. So when you draw a graph, for example, I am drawing a line like this. So we, what does this solubility curve? So what is the definition? It is a line graph which is obtained by plotting the changes in solubility of a substance with the change in temperature. So if you take solubility here, this side is solubility. Okay, this one shows solubility. This one shows the temperature. Like as the temperature increases from 0 degree, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, keep on increasing the temperature up to 100 degrees C. So as the temperature increases, the solubility of this substance gradually increases. So this line graph is called solubility curve. Definition is given in your book. And different substances have different solubility curve. Okay? Now, in a graph, solubility is plotted along the ordinate y-axis. This one is called the y-axis. This is the solubility which is kept in the y-axis. And the temperature is plotted in the x-axis. This line is called x-axis. In maths, you already you have studied. This is the origin, that is O, starting point. Okay? So this is y-axis and this one is called x-axis. Two ordinates are there. And then next one, substance like the solubility curve of substance like calcium sulfate. Calcium sulfate, if you write there, it shows that there is a decrease after attaining certain temperature. Means after getting certain temperature, 
their solubility decreases. It does not increase. In case of calcium sulfate. And then next one, substance like potassium nitrate, you can see the diagram is also given there. In case of potassium nitrate, the solubility curve is like this it is made. Going straight means gradually it increases with the rise in temperature. At the beginning, the solubility increases gradually, means very slowly. But after some time, it rises steeply, means more and more solubility increases. It shows a considerable increase in the solubility with a rise in temperature, whereas this is a potassium chloride, okay, KCl. Sorry, potassium nitrate. Potassium nitrate. The solubility curve of potassium nitrate is shown here. Then next one is, the solubility of sodium chloride, you can see in the graph which is given in the book, it starts from 10, it increases like this and goes straight. It means it increases. The solubility of sodium chloride increases only a little with the rise in temperature. Only a little bit increase is there in case of rise in temperature. The solubility of sodium chloride increases. It means sodium chloride is only partially affected by increase in temperature and that's why its solubility curve shows gradual increase not tremendous increase or all of a sudden increase now the one which is important that is shown in a separate figure that is solubility curve of sodium sulfate decahydrate look at the diagram which is given like this you can see it starts this one shows the solubility and this one shows the temperature y ordinate X ordinate and how the solubility is shown it is shown that it rises gradually to a peak and after that it decreases now which substance is that it is sodium sulfate Na2SO4 10H2O what is the meaning of this one sodium sulfate SO4 is sulfate 10 means deca H2O means hydrate so sodium sulfate deca hydrate it so a very different type of solubility curve in which we find that the curve gradually increases and rises to a peak. This is the maximum point, the peak. And after that, it gradually decreases. Now there is decrease in solubility with the increase in temperature. This one shows the temperature, 10, 20, 30, okay, up to 100 degrees. So what we find, why it is so, if question is asked, why there is uh, expansion first increase in temperature then there is a decrease in the solubility of sodium sulfate because this sodium sulfate will change into sodium sulfate only that decahydrate will be removed so I will just read out solubility of sodium sulfate decahydrate so a sudden change in direction at which temperature at 32.8 degrees C so this temperature which is marked it is 32.8 degrees C. At this particular temperature, this change in the graph is obtained. And why it is obtained? It rises sharply up to this 32.8. And after this temperature of 32.8, the solubility curve decreases or it goes down. This is due to the change of sodium sulfate decahydrate that is 10 molecules of water to anhydrous sodium sulfate anhydrous means now this sodium sulfate has no water molecule anhydrous means without water I, you can find here in the formula i have not written h2o earlier there was 10 h2o this 10 h2o has been removed at this particular temperature and that's why due to loss of water molecule there is decrease in the solubility curve now, what are the applications of solubility curve? Where do we use this type of solubility curve? Number 1 or A. It helps to determine the solubility of a particular solid at a particular temperature. Like at this particular temperature, what is the solubility of a substance? Number 2. In comparing the solubility of different solids in a solvent at a particular temperature, like you can say, the solubility of different solids at a particular temperature can be easily compared with the help of this graph. Like here I have drawn many like potassium nitrate, sodium nitrate, so many solids I have taken. So just by looking at this curve, we can know which one has more solubility 
with increasing temperature which one show the lesser solubility with the increasing temperature and third one number c in separation and purification of solid when we separate and purify the solid during that time we can refer to the solubility curve it will be helpful for us in fractional crystallization technique because solid can be purified and separated by fractional fractional crystallization technique those solid solid which has lower solubility curve they will be always first to crystallize and those solid which so a higher solubility curve they will crystallize and get separated later on and the last one a sharp break in the curve like here you can see there is a break in the curve it shows a transition temperature means at a particular temperature there is changes in their solubility curve okay now next we have to study solubility of gases in water you know that uh, many gases do dissolve in water and aquatic animals survive due to the presence of dissolved oxygen inside the water that they are able to take with the help of their gills now what are the effect solubility of gases in water number a effect of pressure so one by one we will study them okay the next one we have to study is solubility of gases in water you know that gases dissolve in water just now i told and the aquatic animals survive due to the presence of dissolved oxygen gases now first one is effect of pressure what is the effect of pressure on the solubility of gas when pressure is applied on the surface of a liquid it will help the gases to dissolve more and more in that liquid so solubility of gas will at a particular temperature increases with increase in the pressure of water so you can write that pressure is directly proportional to solubility at a particular temperature so if pressure increases solubility of the solid also increases at a particular temperature now henry's law states that what is henry's law henry's law predict the effect of pressure on the solubility of a gas in a liquid this law says that the mass of a gas that dissolves in a definite volume of liquid at a constant temperature is proportional to the pressure of the gas provided so pressure is directly proportional to the mass of the gas which is soluble or which dissolves in a liquid at a particular temperature so you can say that the second point the gas does not react chemically with the liquid that whichever gas has to be dissolved in the liquid it should not react chemically with that particular liquid so once again what is henry's law mass of a gas that dissolves in a liquid at a particular temperature is proportional to the pressure of the gas and second is the gas should not react chemically with the liquid that is the water with which it has to in which it has to dissolve now there are some examples in cold drinks or aerated drinks like lemonade pepsi and all this you know that carbon dioxide gas is filled under very high pressure and once we open the can of those bottles aerated drinks the gas is released and that's why the effervescence is produced okay so this is the reason why carbon dioxide comes out with a fizz like once we open the bottle the cold drinks bottle will come out fizzing outside isn't it? the fizz is produced or the gas is produced because it has been kept under pressure inside the packed or the canned cans or bottles okay now effect of temperature number b how does temperature effect the solubility of gases in water with the increase in temperature there will be decrease in the solubility of a gas it means solubility of a gas solubility of or gas 
is inversely proportional to temperature. 1 by temperature I am writing means inversely proportional to temperature. It means once the temperature increases, solubility of the gas will decrease. So solubility of a gas decreases with the rise in temperature. Thus a gas dissolves more easily in cold water as compared to a hot water. Now next one is boiled water has no taste. Why? This is the reason behind them because boiled water has higher temperature and at higher temperature less gases are soluble in it. It means the gases will be removed from it and without the gases and the minerals the plain water will have flat taste means it will have no taste at all as compared to the cold water. Now next is solubility of solids and gases in water with temperature and pressure is already given there like in case of solid solubility increases with the increase in temperature but in case of gases solubility will decrease with the increase in temperature now what about the pressure in case of solid there is no effect of pressure on the solubility of solid but in case of gases, solubility will increase with the increase in pressure. Means once the pressure increases, solubility of gas increases. But if you compare it with the solid, this is about the gas only, no? solubility of gas. But in terms of solid, solid has no effect on the pressure. Solubility of a, like if the pressure increases or decreases, it has no effect on solubility of a solid. Understood? In case of gas, it will increase or decrease with the increase or decrease of pressure. Now, next we have hydrated and anhydrated substance. What is the meaning of hydrated? Hydra means water. So, hydrated are those compounds that contain water of crystallization are called hydrates. H-Y-D-R-A-T-E-S. Hydrates. Okay? And the water which is present in that are called water of crystallization or water of hydration. So what is hydrates? The compounds that contain water. Okay, simple words. What are hydrates? Compounds that contain water of crystallization. Water of crystallization means the water molecule which is present inside them is called water of hydrates or water of crystallization. Like Generally we find some solid, these solids if you touch it and feel it, it will feel uh, dry only but it may contain some water molecules inside it, those water molecules are trapped inside their molecules and such water molecules are called hydrated, sorry water of crystallization or water of hydration. Now next one is water of crystallization. During the process of crystallization, means formation of solid from the liquid, some salts crystallize out as hydrates containing definite amount, amount of water molecules. So fixed amount of water molecules that are present along with the crystals as an integral part, means internal part of their constitution is called water of crystallization. Like just now, while drawing that solubility curve, you remember I had written Na2SO4 sodium sulfate 10H2O. This I had written, no? 10 molecules of water is associated with this sodium sulfate. And it is present as an integral structure in the structure of sodium sulfate. So this water molecule is called water of crystallization. So compounds which have water of crystallization are called hydrated salts. So what is hydrated salts? Those compounds that contain water of crystallization. Compounds with hydrated compounds with water of crystallization. Water of crystallization. Compounds with water of crystallization or having water of crystallization are called hydrated salts like this one is also an example of hydrated salt. In your book some more examples are there. On heating these water molecules will be lost and 
the hydrated salts will lose their shape and their color also means heating of hydrated salts will lose their shape also and lose their color also because this water molecule is lost and such a hydrated salt from which the water molecule has been removed that changes their shape and color now the compound which is obtained is called anhydrous salt so what is the meaning of anhydrous anhydrous salt means those salt or the solid molecules which are obtained after removing the water of crystallization from their compound by heating okay and they have different shape and different colors it means compounds will show changes in the color when they are heated because of the loss of this water of crystallization from their molecules so i will give some examples which are given in the book like number 1 sodium carbonate decahydrate na2co3 10h2o the chemical name is sodium hydrate sodium carbonate decahydrate and the common name is washing soda so you should write this in your copy and learn it the common name and their formula then epsom salt magnesium sulfate hepta hydrate that is mgso4 magnesium sulfate hepta means 7 h2o hepta hydrate Similarly, we have gypsum from which the plaster of Paris is obtained. Calcium sulfate dihydrate, that is CaSO4, di means two, so two H two O. Then, what are anhydrous substances? Next, we have to study anhydrous. Just now we studied the substance that do not contain water of crystallization are known as anhydrous substances. and the examples of anhydrous compounds are sodium chloride can you find any water molecule there nacl there is no h2o so nacl is an example of anhydrous substance it is also there in your syllabus then next one potassium bromide that is kbr there is no h2o so this is also an example of anhydrous substance sodium nitrate that is nano3 you cannot get any water molecule here nano3 there is no h2o so this is also example of anhydrous substances okay so next we have to study is efflorescence i will just explain it then deliquescence after that hygroscopic substance then drying and dehydrating agent and then we'll complete the syllabus so what is efflorescence the phenomena in which a crystalline salt on exposure to atmosphere loses partly or completely its water of crystallization is called efflorescence so if you keep a this one like a, a salt that contains water of crystallization if you expose it this crystalline hydrated salt it will lose the water molecules that is ten h2o either fully it will lose or partially it will lose some water molecules this process of loss of total or partial water molecules from a uh, hydrated salt when exposed to the outside atmosphere is called efflorescence and the salt is called efflorescent salt now examples of some efflorescent salts are like copper sulfate pentahydrate this is also efflorescent salt once it is exposed to dry air it becomes copper sulfate plus the water molecules are released and there is change in the color earlier it was blue crystalline solid that copper sulfate now it becomes white powder okay so copper sulfate pentahydrate is an efflorescent salt when exposed to atmosphere it loses water of crystallization as a result it changes its color from blue to white all right so understood what is the meaning of efflorescence efflorescence is the process in which hydrated salts when exposed to atmosphere loses these water molecules that is water of crystallization either partly or fully and so there is change in their color also okay so next we have deliquescence okay so next one is deliquescence i have just written the de what deliquescence means those solid substances which 
द फेनोमेना इन विच वाटर सोल्यूबल सब्सटेंस एनी सब्सटेंस दैट इज सोल्यूबल इन वाटर ऑन एक्सपोजर टू एटमोस्फेयर एट अ ऑर्डिनरी टेम्परेचर ए जॉब मॉइस्चर फ्रॉम द एटमोस्फेयर एंड इट बिकम्स मॉइस्ट एंड फाइनली इट डिजर्व इन दैट मॉइस्चर टू फॉर्म अ सेचुरेटेड सोल्यूशन मीन सच सब्सटेंसेस इट इज द प्रोसेस इन विच सच सब्सटेंसेस विल एब्जॉर्ब मॉइस्चर फ्रॉम द एटमोस्फेयर इट विल गेट डिजॉल्व इन दैट मॉइस्चर एंड फॉर्म अ सोल्यूशन ऑल्सो आर कॉल डेली क्वेश्चन and the substance are called deliquescent substance some examples are caustic soda like naoh and hydrous magnesium chloride that is mgcl2 6h2o and hydrous means without water molecules so when they will be exposed to atmosphere they will absorb the moisture from the atmosphere they will become wet or dissolved and they will form a solution okay so such type of substance are called deliquescent substance now deliquescence when it occurs when the vapor pressure of the salt is much lower than the atmospheric vapor pressure and thus the deliquescent is minimized in dry conditions when there is less moisture in the atmosphere because humidity will be less so during that time the process of deliquescence it will be decreased okay whereas efflorescence will be maximized in wet conditions okay so you can see the difference between deliquescence and efflorescence in dry condition deliquescence will be decreased but efflorescence will increase in wet condition just opposite it is the efflorescence is maximized whereas deliquescence will be minimized now you have seen the table salt once the table salt is exposed or kept outside it will absorb moisture from the atmosphere and it will become wet it will not remain fresh free flowing as it is shown in the captain cook ad why because it absorbs moisture and becomes deliquescent okay it turns moist and it forms a solution though sodium chloride that is nacl the common salt which we use in pure form it is not a deliquescent substance but since along with our commercial salt some impurities are added what are those impurities they are added in the form of different types of iodine mineral and other compounds which are added to it they make it impure and that changes the commercial sodium chloride which is not deliquescent into a deliquescent substance so it is the presence of impurities which make our common salt deliquescent in nature and that's why they absorb moisture and become wet like a solution now next is hygroscopic substances what is the meaning of hygroscopic substances those substances hygro means the substances which absorbs moisture from the atmosphere but they will not dissolve in that moisture they are called hygroscopic they absorb moisture but not dissolved in that moisture absorb moisture but not dissolve in it and examples are number 1 conch sulfuric acid concentrated h2so4 they are hygroscopic substance number 2 phosphorus pentoxide p2o5 third one is quick lime that is calcium oxide and silica gel now you may have found that this type of hygroscopic substance they are kept or used in the lab for drying of gases that is to remove the moisture from any gas they are hygroscopic all deliquescent substance are hygroscopic means did you find anything common even they also absorb moisture this one is also absorbing moisture so all deliquescent substances are hygroscopic but all the hygroscopic substances are not deliquescent what is the difference here in deliquescence they form a solution they form solution with that moisture they dissolve in that moisture and form a liquid solution but here they will not form a solution understood so that's why all hygroscopic substances are deliquescent but all deliquescent substances are not hygroscopic in nature got it now last we have to do is drying and dehydrating agents and the differences between deliquescent and hygroscopic two differences are there 
that you can write in your copy as homework. Okay. Drying agents are the one which absorb moisture from the substance. It is used even in the electronic parts also. Some packet, a small packet containing some solid in it, which act as a drying agent. They are used to remove the moisture from solid, liquid, and gases. And thermal drying of solids is done by removing the moisture from materials by vaporization or evaporation. Like if you want to remove moisture from your food particles, rice or anything, you can place it outside in the sunlight and it will evaporate and it will be alright. Okay. So drying characteristics depends on how the moisture is retained in the material. The liquid which is found attached to the material can be dried or removed by vaporization or evaporation. And once it is re removed, drying of moisture is done. Okay. Now next common examples of drying agents which are used is calcium chloride, phosphorus pentoxide, silica gel. They are also used as drying agents. Now what is dehydrating agents? D means without or minus. Hydrating means water. So those agents or substances which helps in the removal of water molecule from the substance is called dehydrating agent. A dehydrating agent removes water which is chemically bound to a substance. That is the water of crystallization can be removed with the help of dehydrating agents. It is a substance that removes water from a material in a chemical reaction. It is done with the help of certain dehydrating agents like sulfuric acid, phosphoric acid. They act as a dehydrating agent. Okay? So soft water and hard water, I think it is not there in the syllabus. I have already, wait, I will check it also. Yeah, this is drying and dehydrating agents. Only meaning and examples you have to learn. Okay? And hygroscopy, efflorescence, deliquescence, and hygroscopy. This is there in the syllabus. And uh, soft water, hard water, it has been removed from the syllabus. So we have completed this chapter. You can try the exercises as homework. Alright, thank you.